What did UConn prove winning back-to-back -back <laughs> titles? I'll tell you what UConn proved winning back-to-back -back titles. They're the Michael Jordans of college basketball. Wow. That's right. Shannon, take notes. Wow. Take notes, Shannon. Let's make that headline go viral. I like that one. They're the Michael Jordans of college basketball. Why? Because in their six national titles, mm -hmm. 2000, 1999, 2004, 2011, 2014, and obviously back-to-back -back this year, they're 6-0 and in national championship games. That would make them the Michael Jordans of college I love basketball. that line. Remember I said that. Danny Hurley, sensational job coaching this team. Uh, you look at the balance scoring that they received. Newton was the most outstanding player, Tristan Newton. Uh, he, he, he balled out. But they got a balance scoring attack. Him, Castle, obviously Cam Spencer, and Klingon, even with his 11 points and five rebounds. I'm not going to say he did a bad job. I'm not getting caught up in Zach Eadie's 37. He was absolutely sensational earlier on. But then all of a sudden, when there was a 23-21 lead by Purdue, all of a sudden, things went you know, very, very quiet for Purdue. And they didn't have much of an answer. And it wasn't like Zach was being double teamed for most of the game or whatever. Sometimes they would blitz him on a couple of occasions, but for the most part, they weren't doing that. So I'm looking at it from that standpoint. And a lot of his money, a lot of those numbers in terms of the 37 overall, I'm not taking anything away from what we saw from him early, Coach Shannon, nothing early. But as the game waned, he was not, you know, they, they held him in check. And so I'm looking at the coaching. I'm looking at the balance scoring attack. I'm looking at the perimeter shooting. I'm looking at UConn's ability to get out and deny Purdue the ability to shoot three-point shots. And it comes down to, you know what? They do what's necessary in order to get the job done. UConn is not a one-dimensional monster. They, had, they can beat you in a myriad of ways, and they certainly did it in one game last night. And that's why they're the deserving reigning two-time defending national champions this morning. Yeah, I agree with you, Stephen A. It's hard to deny anything that Coach Dan Hurley said about how impressive this was, and it was more impressive than what Duke did and what Florida, and I hate to, you know, parse uh, anything and try to take it back to that, but when you look at that, those three guards, they're relentless. The pressure that they uh, apply, Spencer, Newton, and Castle, they're relentless at ball pressure. They do a great job of distributing the basketball on the backdoor cuts. They do a great job of shooting the ball from the perimeter, and they made it tough. And Zach Eady was going to need to have a 60-30 game and shoot about 80% for them to have a chance. He scored basically 62% of their points. I don't really know. It was a situation like a Caitlin Clark. It was like he either did it or it didn't get done. And so that's why they didn't win the game. They were overmatched. Uh, uh, UConn, the better team, top to bottom. He did what he could. Uh, but like you said, Stephen, it was just too much UConn last night. They're better than advertised. Uh, kind of like with South Carolina. You graduate your starters, you come back with a new team, and you still, South Carolina goes 38-0, win the national championship. For them to come back in today's game and to bring, uh, have a new, basically a new lineup and to do what they did in the fashion, it's not the fact that, man, they had a nail-biter, man, they had a call that go their way or this thing could have been over. Stephen, it was never close. No clue. I mean, you you win every game by double digits. I mean, you got to go back. This. I mean, I can't remember that in my lifetime where I can remember national championship uh, final fours in March Madness, and I go back to when, before it was sixty uh, sixty four teams. I'd never seen somebody be this dominant. Not in the, not in the, not no, not this dominant. Either even when UNLV uh, uh, Stephen A won it the first year in ninety. They had a close game. I think they only beat Ball State, Coach, correct me if I'm wrong, by like four. Now, they blew everybody outside, even that demolition job they did on Duke in the national championship game. But they had one game that was one or two possessions. They didn't have this at UConn. Coach Dan Hurley said, look, I'm staying, but you can, you can name your price at Kentucky if you wanted it. <laughs> look, they're the bluest of blood. Six national championships over a 25-year period. Uh, the way they've dominated college basketball in the last two years of the NCAA tournament, think about this. In the last two years, they've finished every single game in the NCAA tournament with their walk-ons on the court. I wow. mean, Andrew Hurley had the ball in his hands at the end of every single game. I'd have shot it. It's absolutely incredible. And, and Dan Hurley's got to get the credit. As teams got to get the credit, they have a collective responsibility. They took this Purdue team. All right, a Purdue team that assists on 65% of their field goals, forget about that. They only had one guy that had an assist in the game. Braden Smith had eight. The rest of the team, zero. 
a Purdue team that shoots 41% from the three-point line. They were one for seven. They couldn't even get a three-point shot. And you talk about what they did with Zach Eady. Zach Eady made tough, contested jump hooks early. He went over 10 minutes from the five-minute mark of the first half until about, about the 14-minute mark of the second half without scoring. Dominant defensive game plan, collective responsibility offensively and defensively. Danny Hurley is the best coach in college basketball. They lost five of their top eight. They lost three guys to the NBA, and they came back, and they dominated. John Calipari made news a, a couple of days ago, uh, you know, reportedly scheduled to depart from Kentucky to go to Arkansas. What's the difference between what Danny Hurley is doing and what John Calipari hasn't been able to do? It's his model. Uh, I, D- Danny Hurley has come up with a model that works. Well, first of all, he's an elite coach. Uh, he was born to coach. His, the vision that he looks at the game at is, is so unique. I say they play defense like they're from Jersey City, and they play offense like they're from FIBA. I mean, that's just the way they play, but it's his model. What has is, what is Dan Hurley done? Player development, player retention, recruiting, and then going to the portal to find a fit. Think about this year's roster. Hassan Diara comes off the bench. Cam Spencer. He's there for, he was the first guy that got in the portal. Last year, they got Tristan Newton. Oh, he was the most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament this year. And this year, they got Cam Spencer Hurley. Yes, I called him Cam Spencer Hurley because basically Cam Spencer is an extension of Danny Hurley. He brings toughness. He's a perfect fit. You collect talent, but you've got to make a team. And what they had, they had enough culture creators that returned. That's the retention part of it. They recruited high-level players, Stephen Castle, absolutely dominating defensively throughout the tournament. And then they go to the portal and find the right fix. Cal's a little bit been behind the curve in terms of his model. But he's got $5 million to work on it this year, next year at, at, at Arkansas. Okay. Go ahead, Shannon. Stephen a, but here's the thing, Stephen A., it's not his model. Coach adopted this. He wanted the one and dones. He felt that if he got the most five star, four and five star recruits, it would give him a leg up on everyone else. Now, granted, maybe they were just coming to go to the to the uh, uh, the NBA, and that was just to stop off. That was, you know, uh, uh, that's what college is. College basketball is a fe- college football is a feeding system. The NBA used to have, you know, you could go straight from high school to the NBA. Cal wanted this model. Coach K was so envious, he adopted the model. Dan Hurley says, you know what? I'm going to find guys. I'm going to go to the portal. I'm going to get me a guy with some experience. And that's what more teams are starting to do is go into the portal. Hey, how many minutes can you give me? How much money you got for me? But I like this because he's saying that I believe that with, with, with seasoned guys, guys that are sophomore, guys that are junior, I can convince them to play together. I can convince them to be unselfish. It's not about, well, I was a five-star. I got 25 shots in high school. I need to get 25 shots in college. So either coach Calipari needs to change the model, go back to where it was, try to get – hey, I understand you want the best guys, but the best guys want to come and be one and done. And I agree with you, Coach. It's hard to get young guys to play together for an extended period of time when they've been used to being the man their entire life. I could, I'll could. i tell you this. I, I love the coach uh, – the point, uh, Shannon, that Coach brought up. Purdue was attempting 23s a game. They were one of the nation's leader mm-hmm. in three-pointers made and three-point attempts. And last night could only get, a, could only get off seven three-point shots. Yeah. And only one individual had an assist. Yeah. Those are incredible stats to bring to the forefront because it just shows that no matter what we want to point to about what we saw from Newton or Castle or anybody else, offensively, Defense won this national won championship. Yeah. Defense yes. is what it was yeah. about they last cut night. Off the, big, the long and range. The, and the You're biggest one, right. and the biggest one is Zach Eady. Yeah. I mean, listen, you can say what you want. He's seven four. I know he's got a future. Um, uh, there were times when he was impressive. Ended up averaging about twenty nine and sixteen in this NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. But do I think it's a blemish to some degree that you went ten minutes in a national championship game held scoreless? Yes. That, yeah. that, that, I mean, especially when you knew 
And everybody he knew. He played tough, though. To, they wore him out. I want to give Purdue play credit. Purdue play, played hard. They he, played tough. They just can't hang. Well, first of all, I'm Who, not giving any. Hold on, hold on. Let me be clear about this, Shannon. <laughs> Nobody is getting credit for playing hard for a national team. Okay, well, I'm no, We're not that. doing that. They had a nice no, no. run, Stephen I, A. I've they seen, had a nice I've seen, run. I've never seen anybody not play hard with Edie a had a great run. But I think Klingon. ain't giving them that. Klingon did a great job. Later, as the game progressed, pushing him further and further yes, and That's further right. out. So it was a, a, two, a one foot shot, a two foot shot, a three foot shot. Legs. And the next thing you know, he was trying to throw the sky legs. hook like Kareem from That's 10 right. to 12. That's right. Yeah. Put the legs out. You know, he put yes. the legs. Yeah. That's right. Yes. And I just want to say huge shout to Newton and Spencer because they'll obviously be gone next season. We'll see with Castle if he's one and done. 